Would you please introduce yourself? Sure, my name is Ivy Gibson. I'm the Chief Compliance Officer and Assistant General Counsel at Western Carolina University. What is copyright? So copyright is an intellectual property law that protects authors of original works of authorship that are in a tangible medium. Um, so it gives these authors several different rights. They have the right to reproduce their work, uh, to prepare derivative works, to distribute copies of their work, to perform it and display it, and to give any of those rights to others to do the same. What types of work are protected under copyright? What works aren't protected? Pretty much everything is protected by copyright. Um, anything that's in the tangible medium, so uh, literature, uh, things that are written down, uh, pictorial graphics, uh, motion pictures, uh, sounds, music, uh, drama and choreography, um, just anything that's in a tangible medium. Um, it might best be explained by what's not protected by copyright. Um, so ideas, if you have an idea about something, that's not protected. Facts, we don't protect facts because we want people to be able to gather news and, and whatnot without that being protected. Um, procedures, methods, um, and processes. Um, Useful item, items, which is one that I think is really interesting. We can't protect our clothing um, or a couch. Those are useful items that we want people to be able to um, freely use those ideas and expressions. How long does copyright protection last? So after 1978, um, the law says that copyright protection lasts for the lifetime of the artist plus 70 years. How do I know if a work is still protected by copyright? Well, the first thing you want to do is look for a copyright notice. So um, we've all seen the little C with the circle around it. Uh, that indicates that a work is copyrighted. Um, but that's not necessary for you to have copyright protection. Um, so if you don't see the C, you should still look elsewhere to find out whether a work's protected. Namely, you can go to the Library of Congress website. They have a, a list of archives of, of copyrighted works. If you don't find anything there, you can also reach out to uh, the Federal Copyright Office and ask them to search their files. There's a number of works that are registered with that office that they're able to look through to find out whether something is copyrighted. Um, finally, if you can't find it anywhere, you should operate under the assumption that everything is copyrighted. Could you please explain the public domain? Certainly. So, um, after a copyright expires, it enters uh, what we call the public domain. And the public domain is really just a term of art um, that is an area that uh, works reside that you can use without fear of infringement. Um, so their copyright uh, has expired. What is fair use? Fair use is really a uh, limitation on uh, the author's exclusive rights that we discussed earlier. Um, it allows for and promotes freedom of expression uh, and allows someone to use pieces of the copyrighted work um, in certain circumstances without fear of infringement. Um, the important thing about fair use is that uh, there are four factors that a court uses to determine whether something is fairly used or not. Um, and this isn't decided up front, right? So this is decided sort of after the fact when someone is defending against a copyright infringement claim. Um, so the first thing that the court looks at is how the work is being used. So is the work transformative? And by that, I mean, have, has the artist repurposed it in a way that adds value to the work? Um, additionally, the court will look at whether it's educational or commercial. Um, secondly, the court looks at the nature of the copyrighted piece. So is it a factual piece or is it a creative piece? 
as we discussed earlier, facts uh, don't have copyright protection, so um, a factual compilation will receive uh, less deference from a court than a creative piece would receive. Um, the fourth factor that the court looks at is how much and what portion of the work is being used. Um, here, they're looking at whether um, you're using sort of the climax of the movie or a little segment of the movie. Are you looking, are you using the whole photograph um, or just a portion of it? And finally, what impact um, does this have on the audience or the market for the original work? Um, so if the repurposed work is taking over the market completely, um, a court is going to look unfavorably on that. Um, but if it has a different market, perhaps that uh, does lead to a better fair use claim. If I'm a student working on a project, can I use any photograph I find on Google Images? No, 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 absolutely not. Um, you should assume that everything is copyrighted. I will offer one alternative though. Uh, you can go to the Creative Commons website and search for images there. Uh, there you will be able to use the images in the way that the author allows you to use them. So in some cases you may have to attribute the image to the uh, author, in some cases you won't. Could you go into more detail about Creative Commons? Absolutely. So Creative Commons is a way that uh, authors can share their work and allow others to use it while they still retain the copyright. Um, and they can place some restrictions on the way that you can use the work. For instance, um, you can say that you can use my work for commercial or non-commercial uh, reasons. You can say they have to attribute your work to you or they don't have to do that. And there are a few others. So an author gets to share their work, allow others to use it, uh, while still retaining some sort of control over it. What can happen if I use a copyrighted work without permission? Well, you could be sued. Um, there are both uh, civil and criminal penalties that come along with copyright infringement. Um, so people sued for infringement often uh, say that they didn't know they were doing anything wrong. And unfortunately, with infringement, it's a strict liability tort. So you don't have to know you're doing anything wrong to be liable for it. However, if you do know you're doing something wrong and you're doing it willfully, um, the damages, um, the amount that you would have to pay or uh, your term in prison uh, could be significantly higher. What copyright legal case is the most interesting to you? There's a ton of interesting ones out there. I, I think I could talk about them all day, but one um, that I remember following really closely was the Shepherd Fairy uh, Hope poster. So during uh, Obama's run for president, and there's this iconic image of him, you know, staring off into the distance. It's really, um, uh, it's in blue and red, and it says hope underneath it. So uh, very representative of his candidacy and sort of his, his run for president. Uh, and it came out in 2009 that Shepard Fury had based this image on a photo that was taken by the uh, a photographer for the Associated Press. And they reached out to him wanting to, uh, you know, claim that photo. He claimed fair use at the time, but unfortunately, a court never got to rule on whether it was fair use. I, I found this sort of devastating because when you look at it, it does look like a transformative use. Um, but what was playing in the background was Shepard um, Ferry had deleted some of the evidence um, that would have been uh, would have been good for the other side. And because he deleted that, um, he ended up facing trial in New York. Um, he pled guilty to it. Um, but overall, it, it made sense for him to settle the case and, and sort of move on. Um, anyways, I, I just thought it was a, a really fun case to, to follow, especially um, since in, in many ways that was representative of um, 